hello welcome back to my channel after my first post about alpine um, going with nyanya together many of you have actually asked about you know how did i manage to bring my dog um, fly from malaysia to switzerland and um, in this video i'm going to tell you a little bit more about you know what to prepare and the process um, in terms of bringing dog to um, to, to fly it's actually not really difficult at all if i can i think you can too and you know how to choose in terms of um, padding cabin or um, padding cargo um, how i actually handle my dog in the plane and what to take note and most importantly it is not really expensive as you thought yeah so in terms of preparation you have to start um, all the preparation at least two and a half months before your flight i mean before your departure date I have actually worked with um, a pet relocation agency to understand what I really need to do in terms of the whole process. Um, my experience with them was considered decent and they were actually recommended by my regular vet. So I'm going to tell you um, what you really need to do with the agent. Um, of course, you, you can you know, always do it yourself, but, but I was very busy with my entire relocation process, so I worked with the agent. Two and a half months before the departure, there are three things that you need to do. First thing is to ensure that your dog has got already a microchip inside their body. And the second thing is, you know, the, about the rabies vaccination. You can only do the rabies vaccination after the microchip is inside your dog. And third thing is about the basic vaccination, which is the annual vaccination. Make sure your dog has the valid vaccination to the date of export. Three weeks to one month before the departure, there's one test that you need to do, which is Nipah virus test. Um, what you need to do is just go to your regular vet and ask for blood sample collection and the agent will actually go to your regular vet and pick up the blood sample. They will send to the lab 10 days before your departure date. The blood serum sample will be rejected if it is pinkish, reddish or cloudish. Then you will need to redraw again. So what caused this thing? Um, um, so if your dog, you know, when, when during this blood redrawing process, if your dog keeps shaking, then the, the blood will not be able to, use, to be used. So five days before the departure date, you have to bring your um, dog to your regular vet for the woman and then the agent will be there um, to get the signature and proof of that um, on all these documents. Three to four days before the departure date, you have to bring your dog to this place for health examination and my agent actually make the appointment for me and then the officer mainly just check um, his ears and then his body whether there's any fleas or not on his skin. It was quite quick, I mean um, just less than 15 minutes. In terms of export documents, there are quite a lot of um, documents that um, you need to prepare. So for my case, my agent actually prepared all these documents for me. My agent fixed all these and he charged me 1,500 ringgit. You know, after all these tests and documents, here comes to the most important part, which is, you know, to book a ticket for yourself and for the dog. Which agent did not really help me on this because, you know, there's quite a lot of things that I need to solve from my end. Of course, for this step, the faster the better. But you must get this done one and a half months before your departure date. Because, you know, some of the tests, you know, are actually based on your, your departure date, especially the Nipah virus test. And now you must be asking, you know, which airline to take. So as you know, during this pandemic thing, um, not many airlines actually operate. And um, Turkish airline was the only choice that I had, which allows dogs to fly with you, I mean, with the passenger from Malaysia to um, Switzerland. There are two options to fly with your dog. One is pet in cabin, another one is pet in cargo. Procedure-wise, these two options also need to request via email um, before you book a flight. A part of this, the most important thing is that, you know, they need to check if the flight that you are requesting with dog is available or not. Because for pet in cargo, for your information, not every aircraft take pet in cargo because of the ventilation um, 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 issue. And then for pet in cabin, there's no more than one pet allowed in cabin at a time. Anyway, request traveling with pets might also be rejected on the airport due to many reasons, even if the reservation was approved. For example, you know, not all dog breeds are allowed to fly. Um, for example, like dog to some destination, not all, but just, you know, be careful. You have to check all these things before you request. After the airport has replied to your email on the confirmation, you know, for you to fly with your dog, all you need to do is to call them up to make payment via phone call, or you can go to um, the airport to pay as well. But here, you only pay for your own airfare with the confirmation with your dog flying with you, but not your dog's airfare. You will only need to pay your dog's airfare at the airport on the departure day itself. So here comes the question, what are the differences between pet in cabin and pet in cargo? So based on my personal opinions, really personal opinion, pet in cabin, I can be with my dog all the time. My hand is so easy to get nervous, you know, when he's alone, you know, and I guess he's too old to take this stress because he's 14 years old. However, you know, there are a lot of works to do if you are bringing him as pet in cabin. I mean, in terms of preparation, 
but if he is with me, at least I can make sure he can take some sleep, take some snack, and take some water. It could be very dehydrated. The plane. Yeah. For pet in cargo, many of you might have thought that you know the airport crew or the vet will actually give you sedation for your dog when they are in pet in cargo, but you are wrong. It is not allowed and it is not good for your dog as well. It's not good for their health. And I have done some research online, you know, in petting cargo is very dark, it is very noisy with the engine sound, and then it is very cold as well. And I seriously cannot imagine how it will be for a long flight, you know, for the dog. And I'm sure my Nyingya will not eat anything or sleep. He will not get to sleep or pee at all if he's alone at the cargo site. But still, it depends because um, if your dog is actually quite big size, I guess you have no choice but just let them to be in the cargo. But just make sure that you know there's enough water and snacks before you send them to the cargo. Based on the Turkish airline rules, for pet in cabin, the pet cannot be more than 8 kg and then um, the pet cage or bag or carrier does not exceed 23 cm times 30 cm times 40 cm in size and then um, it, it must be very clean for the bag. You have to bring extra copies of your pet documentation as well. So in this case, um, my agent actually have prepared everything for me in terms of the documentation and I actually bought this soft expandable bag which cost me 250 ringgit. I bought it from the agent, of course you can buy from any other places if you could find one. This expandable bag is very useful because you have to place your um, dog in the bag under the seat, not really under the seat but you know near to your um, legs area and then if the bag can be expanded then he, he actually get more space in the bag. For padding cargo, you need to buy the crate that you know your dog will feel comfortable to be in. So you need to make sure that he can stand, lie straight and turn when he's in the crate and you might be rejected at the airport if your crate doesn't meet the standard. So here is one tip for you, whichever bag or crate that you choose, you have to place your dog inside the bag or crate at least two months before your departure date to get them used to it so that they won't bark when they're in, inside the crate or bag in the airport and the, or the plane. When you are at the airport on the departure date, you will need to pay for the weight of your dog with the bag. So, I mean, the crate or the soft bag, whichever you choose. And in my case, I brought my dog as a um, padding cabin and my dog's weight plus the soft bag costed me um, 880 ringgit and they claim the total weight of both dog and my soft bag is um, 7.5 kg and my agents actually met me at the airport passing me all these documents the service actually costed me um, about 450 ringgit you can actually opt it out but I chose to have this service to avoid anything happen just to make sure because I just cannot imagine you know if I'll be busy um, coming my dog um, when he's inside the bag and then carrying my luggages and then with the documents my documents his document and at the same time if there's any issue come out I just I just couldn't imagine how I can you know manage this situation and during the flight I have actually prepared the must have things as usual the water the diaper um, yeah this is something um, quite special I mean coming color which is given by my friend and then um, his blanket his toy his fingers and then regular food snacks because yeah yeah actually doesn't eat his regular food when he's outside so I got some snacks as well just to you know feed him make sure his, his stomach is not really empty when I was in the plane I was told that Nyanya has to stay in the bag all the time to be honest the entire flight was quite tiring for me because I wanted to sleep but also worried that he will be you know walking out from his bag I left the bag open as he could not really you know stand being forced staying inside the bag all the time and yes, he did jail break, but luckily the flight was not really full during pandemic. And of course, at times I also sneak him into my blanket and sleep together with me on my seat. Yeah. And I also brought him to sit on my lap to see the nice view outside the window. During transit, um, his height is actually higher than a soft bag, and he actually didn't really feel comfortable, you know, being stuck in such a small bag. So I got no choice but you know sit with him at some quiet place. And in fact, I just recently found out online that um, there's actually a place for dog to pee and poo at the Turkish airport. It's quite proper one, I would say. Um, you know, they have everything for the dog. In terms of charges, I mean, overall, as I mentioned earlier from the beginning, it is not as expensive as you thought or as I thought. First is the export documents, um, which handled by the agent. I paid him 1,500 ringgit. And then second thing is the pet soft expandable bag, which costed me 250 ringgit. And then um, I actually also took the service access um, to check in at the KIA airport, which is um, handled by the agent, which costed me 450 ringgit. And the last thing is um, Nyanya's weight, I mean Nyanya and the soft bag's weight, all together is 880 ringgit. So, you know, total, total or, all add up together is just 3,080 ringgit. It's not as expensive as I thought. I thought it would have been like more than 10,000 to fly a pet. Overall, the process doesn't look complicated and the price is not really expensive as well. And just make sure, just make sure that um, 
your dog is not too old to fly. And that's all. Now, again, you have watched my video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you like. Thank you for watching. Ui, come. Come on. Come here, you know, you know, you know. I have reached a lot of dogs for flight from Malaysia to Chihuahua.